Hello. Hello, I'm Philip from Sunny in Bristol. I'm going to present Diva, which is a new tool that transforms low-level debug dwarf information into a high-level, more human-readable form. Okay, so on the top left is a simple program. It actually doesn't do anything, but still it's generating a lot of dwarf information. Here I print out uh, the dwarf dump um, outputs, and I've just expanded a small section of it. And you probably tell that it's hard to read, and you probably need to know the dwarf specification to interpret it and find any bugs, which is hard. And to quote a colleague of mine, Paul Robinson, uh, in Sony, you wouldn't want to use a disassembler to validate a call graph, so why would you use the dwarf dump output to validate the debug information? So Diva, this, as I said, it transforms from the low level to a high level representation. Um, and one of the key features of Diva is that the output is the same regardless of what dwarf format you use, either version two, three, or four, and what the layout within the ELF file is. So that it doesn't matter which version of the compiler you use and which optimizations you use, and you can even compare GCC with Clang itself. So in terms of the use cases, you could have a high-level C++ programmer um, report, investigate and report any bugs to the low-level compiler engineers. We can also use it uh, within the community to investigate the debug information af before and after a patch that impacts the dwarf information to make sure that it's still valid and it still represents the same thing. And then lastly, from a release uh, QA process, we can create regression tests to make sure there was no regression from the previous version. Oops. Oh. So here's the same example in the top left-hand corner, and I'm outputting the Diva output. So hopefully you can see here that it's more human readable. I'm not going to go through it right now, but hopefully you'll have a look at it at the end. So a, like I said, a C++ programmer should be able to read this quite easily and see if there's anything missing or is ordered incorrectly. However, a more useful way of uh, looking at this is comparing a before and after um, of the Diva output. So here, it's the output from that same example, uh, before and after a patch, where the patch, we deliberately corrupted the type information of the, pr of the parameters of foo, and just threw it into a, a, any diff tool, and hopefully you can easily see that it has identified the problem. It shows you exactly where it is, and then hopefully it will help you guys to fix the bug. So we currently using this in Sony. It's still early days, it's in beta version, uh, but we are creating regression tests uh, around Diva. We're finding it much more simple to create those tests. We're investigating optimization and the impacts of it, so we compare O0 to O2, and also the, the, uh, some of our colleagues, Paul Robinson and Wolfgang, who are implementing Dwarf 5 in the open source uh, LVM, they'll be using it to compare Dwarf 4 to Dwarf 5 to make sure the output is representing the same thing. So today, uh, I've put this, uh, the binaries of Diva onto GitHub. Uh, the Windows version is there today. The Linux version will hopefully be there by the end of the week. So I, I would be really grateful if you guys download it, give your uh, opinions, any feature requests, because uh, I think this will be really valuable to help the debug information in the compiler and hopefully in the near future we'll uh, be contributing this to the LVM project itself. Um, just to highlight one feature that is currently missing from this, uh, this version is a YAML output. Uh, we feel that that'll be much more to, uh, easily to script against, so uh, features like that are coming very soon. These are some of the contributors within Sony that um, helped make this happen. And I'll just leave with a simple block diagram on how potentially you could use Diva in regression tests and investigations. Thank you very much.